Not starting as a rocket engineer, Elon Musk rolled the dice when founding SpaceX, but it's safe to say that he was too lucky in this game. He has found great and dedicated teammates to build a mighty empire after more than many years of hard work. Thanks to that now, we have Workhorse Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, Staring Satellite, and Dragon Spacecraft. Most notably, Starship, a real beast in the sky. It is in development and is expected to make humans' long-standing dream of colonizing Mars come true. However, the journey to reach the Red Planets is really tough. To get a spacecraft carrying about 100 people across the K-Armen line into space and then onto Mars in advance, we need a powerful vehicle to support it in the early stages of the journey. Yeah, that's where Super Heavy Booster comes in. But that remote planet is not a place spent for those who prefer living in their comfort zone. It's the reason why Elon Musk's Super Heavy is not only a normal booster, but also something beyond human imagination. Discuss everything about this in today's episode of Tech Map. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. SpaceX's Starship is the largest and most powerful rocket ever built. In the fully stacked state, the rocket stands 394 feet, 120 meters tall. That's nearly 100 feet or 30 meters taller than the Statue of Liberty and 31 feet or 9 meters taller than Saturn V, the next tallest rocket built. It has a takeoff mass of 11 million pounds, about 5,000 tons. For comparison, the International Space Station has a mass of just under 1 million pounds. In terms of thrust, it is capable of producing more thrust upon liftoff than any other rocket in history such as NASA's giant space launch system and the Saturn V that took astronauts to the moon. The rocket has two stages, the Starship spacecraft itself up top and super heavy, the launch booster below. On its own, Starship stands 164 feet or 50 meters tall, roughly the same height as 16 African elephants stacked on top of each other and has a diameter of 29.5 feet or 9 meters. To lift that spacecraft off the ground, the Super Heavy Booster must be specifically designed. Most obviously, it stands out for its great height, at 226 feet or 70 meters, resembling a tower containing about 23 African elephants. To fully understand its huge scale, through the live video, you can see that humans are completely overshadowed when standing next to Super Heavy. Zoom out a little and you can't even see the humans anymore, just the giant cranes and launch and catch towers that use robotic arms to stack Starship on top of Super Heavy. However, size is not everything. The most complicated part of the rocket is the area containing the Raptor engine group. With the function as the engine section, the aft end of Super Heavy is likely where the fate of early booster prototypes will lie. For the most part, Super Heavy is just a colossal duo of steel propellant tanks that is, to an extent, even simpler than its smaller Starship upper stage, which needs two types of Raptor engines, flaps, a bevy of maneuvering thrusters, and more. However, at the booster's base, SpaceX must design, fabricate, and assemble a nightmarishly crowded and complex mechanical structure capable of mounting, fueling, and powering 33 Raptor engines. Simultaneously, that structure and all associated plumbing must withstand the force and pressure of more than 2,000 metric tons of cryogenic liquid oxygen and the 7,500 tons of thrust those Raptors can generate. That's just the bare minimum, though. Beyond the extraordinary mechanical stress, it must withstand Super Heavy's thrust section also needs to be able to survive the hellish, violent environment created by 33 powerful rocket engines on one side, while the structure is effectively half-submerged in a cryogenic fluid, subjecting the puck and dome to brutal thermal conditions. Last, but certainly not least, the exterior of Super Heavy's thrust structure must be able to survive the mechanical and thermal hell of hypersonic atmospheric re-entry with zero cushioning of the blow. However, once those engines themselves and their surroundings are running smoothly, the booster can generate 16.7 million pounds of thrust during ascent, therefore helping Starship to gain the condition of stage separation and then reach space successfully will be as easy as a piece of cake. 
Yeah, finally it did. Remember its excellent performance in IFT2? Wow, 16.7 million pounds of thrust is no joke, twice that of both NASA's SLS and the legendary Saturn V. So how can Super Heavy create such unparalleled power? First of all, SpaceX's Raptor engine is one of the few engines that successfully runs on a fully staged combustion cycle. Full flow staged combustion is a twin shaft staged combustion cycle that uses both oxidizer rich and fuel rich preburners. The cycle allows the full flow of both propellants through the turbines, hence the name. The fuel turbopump is driven by the fuel rich preburner and the oxidizer turbopump is driven by the oxidizer rich preburner. This design allows the engine to achieve greater efficiency by using all of the available fuel without wasting any of it to power its turbo pumps. It is also considered the most optimal cycle to date. Secondly, the type of fuel also plays an important role. Unlike traditional rockets using kerosene or liquid hydrogen, SpaceX's next generation rocket is powered by methane. Methane optimizes the Raptor's performance well. Rocket fuel performance is measured by a property called the specific impulse, which is essentially how much momentum can be produced for every unit of fuel, a space version of miles per gallon. So, a methane and liquid oxygen combination offers around a 5% performance increase over kerosene and liquid oxygen when burned at the same pressure. However, with methane, engines can be designed to run at much higher, more efficient pressures. When you factor in the increased efficiency, the performance benefit is more like 20% over kerosene. Those efficiency savings mean significant cost savings, making space travel far cheaper. With a higher specific impulse, the quantity of methane required for liftoff is less, meaning smaller fuel tanks. There is also easier storage of the fuel before launch and simpler and lighter fuel pumps on the rocket itself. At this point, Liquid methane is valued more highly than liquid hydrogen. Methane also pressurizes itself in its tanks by a process called autogenous pressurization, which means complex and heavy systems pressurization systems can be dispensed with. Finding the right propellant is one of four key elements to creating a vehicle like Starship capable of supporting the creation of a long-term, self-sustaining human presence on Mars. Elon mentioned this in Making Humans a Multiplanetary Species Conference held by SpaceX in 2016. Of those four factors, according to him, full reusability must be the top priority because this will be the source of most innovation and significant cost reductions for rockets. What's interesting is SpaceX is almost the leader in this area, even though Elon said it was really hard previously. Full reusability is, is, is really the, the, the super hard one. Um, it, it's, it's very difficult to achieve uh, reusability for, for even an orbital system, um, and that challenge becomes even you know, substantially greater for a system that has to go to another planet. Fortunately, over time, SpaceX has found a way to solve this problem, and we can see that through the example of the Falcon case. They designed its rocket boosters from the beginning to eventually become reusable and structured all of the company's plans around that. Early experiments with parachute recovery of Falcon 1 failed and the market for the small rocket also proved less viable than expected. So SpaceX moved on to Falcon 9 quickly using nine of the same Merlin engines. The plan was to build Falcon 9 efficiently enough that SpaceX could use it as an expendable launcher and compete with other launch providers, but to use paid commercial launches to test the technologies to recover the booster step by step. They could assure customers that the tests they would do after the second stage separated would not have any negative impact on getting the payload where it was supposed to go. This allowed SpaceX to pay for its reusability R&D with commercial expendable launches. Step by step, they worked through the problems by having enough extra propellant and lift capacity to try supersonic retro propulsion adding grid fins to steer the booster back to a landing point, practicing soft landings in the ocean, adding landing legs and eventually trying to land the booster, but knowing they'd blow a lot of them up in the process, that didn't matter. No lives were endangered. The boosters would have been destroyed anyway. They could afford to learn iteratively by trying, failing, adjusting, and repeating. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. 
Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.